now, here's meteorologist Michelle Muscatello with your live Pinpoint Doppler 12 Futurecast. And we are continuing to track Hurricane Irene this afternoon. In fact, this is our visible satellite imagery. Now, while Irene has weakened a little bit in the morning, what I'm seeing here from these last few frames is a more well-defined eye uh, wall starting to redevelop in this storm. So we're still talking about a major hurricane. We're still talking about a very large storm. And while it has weakened a little bit, the actual wind field, the depth of how the uh, distance that hurricane and tropical storm force winds are felt is actually expanding. So we're talking you know, 70 plus miles out from the center of the storm for hurricane force wind gusts. And we're talking about tropical storm force winds extending out almost 270 miles from the center of this storm. So conditions starting to go downhill out over the outer banks. Well, it's a beautiful day here in southern New England. Well, though we do already have those watches and warnings in effect, uh, actually watches for our area. It's a hurricane watch for the coastline, including up Narragansett Bay, the Cape, the islands, tropical storm watch for our inland areas. Now the watch versus warning. So a watch is typically issued first. It's talking about the potential to see these hurricane conditions in coastal areas within 48 hours. Now it would be upgraded to a warning when we get within 36 hours out and if we're still feeling like hurricane conditions are imminent in our area and expected in our area. So expect to see some changes. I expect some of these watches to be upgraded here within the next 24 hours. Uh, the flood watch also issued it starting Saturday evening going into late Sunday night. But I got to tell you, just finished looking at some brand new computer model information that came in and the timing of this is looking faster. We may be looking at the height of it to be more of a Sunday morning, maybe into mid afternoon on Sunday, rather than that Sunday evening time frame that we were thinking even just 24 hours ago. So hurricane watches and warnings up and down the east coast of the U.S. now from North Carolina all the way up into New England. Let's go back down to Irene. We'll show you the latest here. These are again are the rain bands from the storm starting to work its way into North and South Carolina with some heavy downpours. Again, winds picking up there. This is a category two hurricane with 105 mile an hour winds gusts to 130 and here's that track once again. So it does stay as a strong Category 2 hurricane as it approaches the North Carolina coast on Saturday morning and then from there works its way up to just off of the New Jersey coastline and across Long Island and Connecticut as we head into again the middle of the day on Sunday and by Monday morning already out of Maine. So this is on a fast path through New England. So we'll feel the effects. It'll be quick hitting here in our area. Notice still this cone of uncertainty that goes all the way from off the coast into eastern Pennsylvania. Our computer models though still honing in on a track and there are still some out there that take it right through Rhode Island but mostly a track that takes it from anywhere say around New York City to into southeastern Massachusetts. So that's the area we're focusing in on because it's such a big storm though we will be feeling the effects of it and a difference, a little shift in the track here or there isn't going to make a huge difference for our area. Look at how these wave heights build into Saturday and more specifically Sunday morning. Uh, 18 foot seas by Sunday morning in the open waters. They may get as high as 25 to 30 feet in the open water south of our area by Sunday afternoon and evening. As far as the timing, again, the outer rain bands arrive Saturday. We're going to see off and on showers, isolated storms. I expect conditions to start to deteriorate by Saturday night and by Sunday. We're looking at hurricane conditions, possible gusts over 75 and a significant storm surge. So I do want to talk more about these potential impacts from Saturday night into Sunday rainfall. We could see three to seven inches in our area. If there were a significant shift in the track further to the east, we could see those rainfall amounts even higher, 10 or more inches. But I'm leaning more now that we're going to be on the eastern side of the storm, which would mean less in terms of rain, but more in terms of wind. So on the current path right now, we're far enough away that we would see sustained winds near hurricane strength, but certainly gusts over hurricane strength and a storm surge of as much as five to 10 feet. Now in terms of wind damage from a category one hurricane. Uh, we are looking at the potential here for extensive damage to power lines, perhaps some large branches and some trees toppled and some roof and signage damage. Now that's from a category one hurricane. Now power outages could last 
day or two. They could last several days. So that's what we'll be looking at around here from this potential storm. City Cam uh, showing the sunshine today. It's a great day to go out and bring in the lawn furniture, finish up your preparations. 82 degrees, calm winds. The humidity is not bad today. Mostly sunny through the rest of the afternoon. And your seven day future cast shows again those showers and thunderstorms starting to arrive tomorrow with the height of the storm on Sunday. It does look dry into early next week. You can get your updated future cast as always on our website at WPRI. WPRI.com.